My name is Vahid Chitza, as part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. No worries. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. I'm Ben Brody. I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, I'm a writer, a beer brewer, all sorts of things. Uh, I work for a medical device company right now called Ambu. Um, we, we specialize in endo endoscopes uh, as well as some anesthesia products as well. Thank you for having me today. I really appreciate it. You got it, brother. I appreciate you taking the time and being with us this morning. So a scale of one to 10, how difficult is it to be an entrepreneur? <laughs> I would say a nine. <laughs> I, I was going with 9.5, but it's okay. <laughs> Some parts cool. But I think it's a lot of motivation needed. And I think that's where it becomes very hard to keep motivated after doing a, you know, you work in your 40 hour, you know, grind. And then, uh, you know, just staying motivated, I think is the thing. That's why it's a nine. So here's my question. How do you keep yourself motivated? What's the, what's the motivation there? I think the motivation behind it is seeing the finished product. Um, so I mentioned I, I'm writing a self-help book right now. It's in the final stages being edited. And just knowing that eventually somebody could be holding that book in person, you know, it'll be tangible. I think thinking about the final product being, you know, something you can physically touch uh, just keeps me going every day. All right. So how did you get a story in self-development? Tell us your story. Um, so I'm not shy about my age. I'm 33 this year, turned 33 in August. Um, and through my 20s, I, I lacked self-awareness and I wanted to make sure to better myself through the self-awareness. And through that, I was able to uh, be, you know, become who my career um, through self-development, through self-awareness first. Um, and then when I hit 29 years old, about four years ago, I started spending time on things that I like to do. And I start, I, and I didn't know where to start. Um, so I got back into the sports again as a 29 year old playing soccer again, you're, you're old, you're out of shape, things like that. And, uh, I think character development and, and bringing my leadership skills back to the, um, back to the board from soccer really helped me, uh, develop myself. Um, and then I, I think self-development is is very helpful when you have somebody that's willing to uh, be a mentor. Um, so in my 20s, I had somebody very close to me uh, at work uh, mentor me through work, and that's how I was able to progress in my career. So I think having a mentor really helps with self-development as well. What's your favorite self-help book, or what are some of the materials that you use? Um, uh, a leadership book. I actually can't remember the title off the top of my head. I, I have it in the other room here. Um, it's leadership with emotional intelligence. That's what it is. And that's helped me a lot. Awesome. So here's my question. I know a lot of entrepreneurs. One of the elements that helps us is getting coordinated, being organized, getting our stuff together. But at the same time, I understand that sometimes we need to put out fires. And when you need to put out fires, fires don't go based on the schedule, right? So how do you balance that? What are some of the methods that you think we should implement? Because that's where I see, like, I know you got a job and you got this and you're doing all that. You're writing a book. How do you manage all of that? What's the, do you have a calendar for yourself? Do you block out time? How do you go about doing that? Uh, I think you mentioned that time management is helpful, right? I think that's a very good skill. And, and fortunately, I learned it about three years ago. I was terrible with time management. I was terrible with setting goals and, you know, when you're writing a book, I think some people pressure themselves a little too much into setting like exact goals, right? Um, with, oh, I want 10 pages written by tomorrow or 20 pages written by this weekend. I don't think that's right. I think you have to kind of step back and feel a little bit emotional about what you're writing. Not so, you know, uh, goal oriented when you're writing at least, but um, with things like beer brewing, uh, it takes four hours to, to brew beer, uh, at least what the setup that I have. And I think you really have to be dedicated to put that time aside, you know, and, and when I play soccer, you know, I know that I'm going to be playing soccer for an hour long game. I'm going to, I know I'm going to be out of the house for two hours. Uh, so I, you know, you just need to manage your time. And um, I, I, I don't use a calendar for personal things. I think, you know, the weekends are the weekends, you know, um, but once you start getting, you know, getting these hobbies and, and starting to write and things like that. I think when you're passionate about it, you'll set time aside. I agree with that 100%. So here's, if somebody is trying to get into the entrepreneurship and business, 
So I guess my question is, what would you have told yourself or what would you want to have your mentor or coach had told you when you were like 20, 25? What are some of the key elements you're like, they should have drilled this in my brain and if they would have told me this, these things would have been much better. Save your money. <laughs> Save as much money as you can because, you know, 10 years ago, had I started saving money, I would have been able to write and finish my book last year. You know, I didn't know how much an editor would cost, you know, and, and uh, I didn't know how much the second round of editing would cost, which I'm going into right now. And now, you know, I was able to save some money the past couple of years and throw that into it. But, you know, had I had given been given this given a little bit better advice when I was younger, uh, I would be in a better position financially as well. Um, another piece of advice would be to be kind to people. Um, you never know what people are going through, whether it's a personal life, professional life, things like that. You always want to try to, uh, I try to do it now. Um, you always try to want to walk in other people's shoes. Um, you know, so maybe take a step back before you, know, you think about judging a person um, just by looking at them or maybe one interaction. Just say, hey, you know, maybe they're going through something I don't know. Those are the two things. Save your money as much as you possibly can when you're young and uh, try to be more kind. Definitely. Now, I, I understand that sometimes, you know, your kindness could be associated with weakness. But you know what? I've come to terms with that. I'm like, it's okay. They're going to take it the way they're going to take it. The right people are going to look at it as kindness and other people are going to look at it as weakness. That's totally fine. That's It's their business. I, I don't want to have anything to do with it. It's their opinion and they could, you know, do whatever they want to do with their opinion. And, you know, that's that's what I found out. So a lot of times we forget that, you know, especially in the business world. There's a lot of competition. We want to win. We have the competitiveness to us, all of that. But it's a thank you for bringing that up. That's a good reminder for today. Yeah, and I, and I think what goes around comes around, right? I'm a strong believer in karma. So, you know, if you get some, you know, stuff poured on you, it could come back around to that person. So, you know, if you're always kind to people, you always try to treat them as well as you think they should be treated or, you know, you should be treated, then... You know, I think going through life that way is just, it's much simpler and uh, karma won't come and bite you uh, when it goes. Yeah, totally, through. totally. So tell us, the, what's the first chapter of your book? Uh, so the book's a self-help book, first chapter. Uh, is just a little bit of background on, on uh, my life, where I grew up. I'm from Baltimore. I grew up in Baltimore. Um, I've gone to s school in Pennsylvania for college. Uh, I lived in D.C. in Pennsylvania a little while after college. And the first chapter kind of goes into how I grew like you know, uh, how, what I grew up with, my two brothers, my stepdad, a divorce, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, a, a cheating stepdad eventually, um, and the hardship that came with that, you know, with my mom having to commit bankruptcy when, when I was about 14 years old. So, I mean, we didn't grow up with money. We, we you know, we weren't privileged at all. And it, um, the first chapter pretty much dives into all that, just so the readers can get a good, you know, hold on who I am and kind of some of the things I've gone through. And, and how I've taken the step to get to where I am today. Ben, how did you, did you just wake up one day and say, yeah, yeah, man, we're going to write a book? Is that what happened? Uh, no, no. Uh, it was about a year and a half ago, man, and I was, I was going through a very uh, hard uh, uh, breakup with a girl that I was dating for a little while. And uh, I was like, you know what? I, I had enough of this. I want to do something for myself. Uh, I want to get hold of, you know, these thoughts and feelings I have, and I want to get you know, what's happened to me on paper, and then I want to openly discuss it with people that read it. Awesome. See, it was a girl. See, if she would have stayed with you, you wouldn't have had that inspiration. <laughs> Tell you, one day you're going to call her and thank her and say, listen, we just sold 100000 of my book. Thank you so much. Here's a, here's a gift card to Starbucks with your new boyfriend. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, hopefully she's not listening to this. <laughs> 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 now, listen, I, I think um, people come to our lives for a specific reason, and there are no accidents in life. Everything happens. Now, sometimes we may not know the exact reason right there and there why those things happen, but there's always a reason. Ben, how do people find you? Uh, my Instagram account, uh, it's bbrody18, where you can find me on Facebook. I'm Ben Brody. You might not be able to find my picture, but uh, uh, my email address as well is in my profile. So if anybody would like to get a hold of me, all you have to do is click email me. And uh, I love talking to people. My, my job in, uh, entails a lot of traveling when COVID-19 isn't present. So I'm in front of physicians uh, at hospitals, you know, talking to them about their needs and things like that. So I love talking to people. 
And uh, any chance I can get to help someone or maybe, you know, their life and, you know, uh, help me in any way, I'm always for it. Yeah, definitely. I don't know how you deal with physicians. They're not the easiest people to deal with. So more, more, more power to you. <laughs> they're definitely a different breed, you know? They're, 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 you know, it is what it is. But I think you're the right man for the job. I want to thank you so much for taking this time and being with us this morning. Hopefully, we'll be able to do more, brother. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Stay safe. Thank you so much. Have a good day. You got it. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.